think a, a lot of us have experienced that when um, we sort of intuitively know what we should do and yet we don't do it. Uh, and, you know, I come from an addiction background where, you know, I was addicted to sugary foods. I was, I took, donuts was one of my addictions. I just think it's one of the funny, funniest sides of food addiction. Uh, but, uh, you know, so it'd be like, actually, I do, intuitively, I knew that having a bag of donuts is not going to do me any good. But I was powerless to stop doing that. So there was something that knew was destructive or if I behaved in that way, it's destructive, but my ego was still too strong <clears throat> to, to stop that. And I think one of the most important things, because at a cert until you reach a certain level of spiritual connection, uh, even if you intuitively know what to do, you, you still, your ego always wins. You know, you always pick up the donuts or the drugs or the alcohol or, or whatever it is. So you have to reach that critical level of spiritual connection and then it's like you have the, the intuition and, and carrying that out that intuition without the ego sabotaging uh, it, uh, uh, can happen, that that is orchestrated. So, I mean, I mean, Hawkins talked about it. There is a level, I mean, actually it is the level, the vibrational level of 12-step groups, uh, the energy in there, or the, the vibration of unconditional love. Uh, when you, when you uh, either... For people who aren't yet, you know, haven't individually, if you're not going to any place spiritual groups, then you have to individually reach the level of unconditional love in your personal vibration. And then that will, that will give enough power to stop an extreme self-sabotage like addiction, like drug addiction or food addiction. Um, I mean, 12-step groups are based on, you know, for me, as, as Hawkins described it, and I, I would agree, you can lean on the group energy while you haven't got that and your sponsor's energy and he's going, look, I can't stop taking these donuts, you know. Well, he says, well, let's start working the steps, come to these groups, and I'll support you. And then somehow you lean on the group energy until you reach that. And then you can, and then if you, if you get to, to unconditional love or higher, you don't need to keep going. If you're an enlightened teacher, obviously you don't need to go to uh, regular meetings. Or if your state is above the level of the vibration of 12 steps, you wouldn't need to. But, at, you know, the ego... Uh, especially if it's a strong self-sabotaging at the level of addiction, does need a relatively high vibration, or you know, you need spiritual groups or friends or buddies. At a certain critical less level, it's like the spirit is strong enough to get to stop uh, any extreme self-sabotaging behaviour. If you're um, so, um, so the self-sabotage. I mean, the things I would do with self-sabotage. I mean, if, you know, I do really recommend people if. If they're struggling with something, going to places or groups, it doesn't have to be 12 steps, it can be Course of Miracles or whatever it is, which have a high vibration, that will aid you rather than being in your home trying to stop a very severe self-sabotaging behavior. There's a thing I, you know, um, I think, you know, like the, the Bible sort of says, I should, should I be quoting the Bible in here, I don't know, but when the two or more are gathered, there is something, you know, when we all come together, in, uh, in a spiritual community, it's like some, somehow the, the infinite unleashes, more, you know, an exponential level. So what I can do in my room alone, cancelling my beliefs, or if I get this whole group of me to cancel beliefs for me, is it has an exponential increase in power. So, uh, and it's a thing I do as well. Um, or if you haven't got access or you just refuse to go to spiritual groups and communities, then how would you do that? It's like, you know, I'm living an, on a rock in an island and I can't stop eating donuts. And, and I know it's not, I shouldn't eat these donuts, but I'm still eating these donuts. Almost like against your spiritual intent. You know, you intuitively know you shouldn't do it, but you do it and you, distru you disrupt and then you're carrying on doing it. So then the thing of uh, spirit spiritual intention, you know, individual spiritual intention, the level of your spiritual intent. What is, I'm not talking about ego intent. I'm not talking about thinking about it. There is, I mean, it's hard to describe what is spiritual intention. It's more like coming from a deeper level of spirit. The spirit you know, I recommend anyone who's suffering self-sabotage and doesn't want to go to spiritual communities or get spiritual mentors or groups to, to set your spiritual intent as high as possible. Meaning, uh, 
I think the Course in Miracles. I mean, if you're on a, if you're on an island alone, I mean, of course, miracles is a good one, and and a, and a watch or a timer or something or a mobile app that can blink at you because you need spiritual discipline, you know, spiritual discipline, and the intention to to apply that spiritual discipline will will rapidly increase your level of consciousness, you know. Um, so it's like, okay, you know, I can't stop eating these donuts. I'll probably be dead in. Um, I'd probably be dead from donuts unless I um, transcend this. So it's like, you know, it's like sometimes these things happen by grace, but there's a, there's a light and you go, okay, I'm going to, I know I need to be disciplined. I know I need to start letting go of my ego on a regular basis. So having that, you know, like, of course, you know, for me, the Course in Miracles, it says like start off on the first lesson twice a day. And then after a short while, it's like every 10 minutes, anyone who's been through it. So they ramp you up very slowly. But, you know, after, after doing it year after year after year, I realized, no, actually, I'm not going to ramp it down when I start again. I'm going to keep the ramp at a very high level. So it's that level of spiritual intent. Because your level of consciousness goes up. To, and also your capacity to go higher goes with each level of consciousness you go up. So if, if I'm practicing, okay, my spiritual intent to God is every, twice a day I'm going to do my, you know, my contemplation, either the Course in Miracles or read a line from Hawkins or whatever it is. Um, and, filter, and you filter your ego just twice a day and it will take you to, and if you commit to that, it will, after a while it will take you to a level of consciousness. But you should ramp it up. After you can do twice a day, then ramp it up to four times, then ramp it up to eight times, then ramp it up to every hour, then ramp it up to every half an hour. Then even as you get to the advanced levels, as Hawking says, on the last levels, it's like moment by moment. In every single moment, I will detach from this thought and be here in the now. And the next moment. But you've built that up. You're not going to be able to do that on day one. So your level of consciousness, because when you... Uh, also, you can use feel the feelings, of course, the miracles... Um, but the thing I wanted to share is like your discipline through the day or your commitment, your in spiritual intent to discipline throughout the day and start off with what you're able to absolutely commit and make, you know, this is the thing I say to people, when you make a spiritual commitment and you really want to go, it should be non-negotiable, you know, otherwise if it's negotiable, negotiable, your ego will negotiate, you know, it's like, okay, like, uh, I share these things in, in the room. I mean, in like, uh, like my own thing is like, uh, I have a spiritual routine, which I've been doing for years. I, in the last, last nine years, I've been to a spiritual group at least once a day, or with a fellow once a day. There was only one day I missed, that was the day my mother was dying in hospital. But nine years without fail, you know, to, to get the energy of a group. You don't have to do that, that's what, what I committed to. So it's like a, almost like a non-negotiable to pray, meditate in the mornings. I do 12-step stuff, brush to list, step tens. Uh, read my Course in Miracles in, in the morning. I mean, at the moment, I mean, this is, but you, you don't get there at the end. This is after many, many years. You know, I'm spending probably two hours doing Course in Miracles lesson, just putting things into God's infinite light and love uh, around some stuff that's coming up. So all of that, and because it's like the more you commit, the more your ego is weakened. Every moment that you're not doing spiritual work throughout the day, your ego is getting stronger. Because you, you realize that, you know, you feel like I'm going to, okay, I'm going to just have morning and evening for spiritual work. So your ego is going to be thinking of donuts, you know, for like, you know, 99% of the day. <laughs> and then you're going, well, I did my two minutes of spiritual work and the ego won when the, when the sugar cravings came. So you realize that, you know, okay, but at least tomorrow I'm going to do four times a day. And then at a certain point, you're going to have the critical mass because you're connecting in, you're trying to connect into the infinite realm. So your level of consciousness will increase. And then at a certain critical moment, you'll have, today I had no donuts. You know, it's a miracle. Because that level of not, every moment during your ago, your level of consciousness, shall we say, is, make, it, make it simple, is going down. Every moment you're trying to, okay, let me let this thought go, let me be in the now, let me go into the observer, or this feeling has come, let me just experience it without making a story about it. Every time you're doing those things, 
your level of consciousness and your connection is going up. So you know, actually, if you think about the whole day, every moment is a moment. You, you know, are, the, are you trying to let go? Or are you just giving your ego time to just hog the airtime? I think there was a great thing. I think Hawkins, there was a, one of my favorite questions, because uh, I listened to a lot of questions and answers with Hawkins, was um, there was this guy. Uh, yeah, he was a sex addict. He was a sex addict. <laughs> anyway, God bless him. And say, I'm sure he, went, he asked Hawkins about his, his, his sex addiction. And, um, and Hawkins said this thing, but it applies to everything. It's like airtime to your ego, essentially. It doesn't matter whether it's sex, whether it's donuts, whether it's money, whether it's, you know, what, how thin am I, whatever it is. It's like, if there's something that you're struggling with, you know, it, he didn't say this, I'm paraphrasing a bit, you know, you've made it special. And that's why your ego goes back to it again and again. I want that donut, I want that donut. So, he said that every moment you allow that to happen, it's gaining energy, yeah? So you're, 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 you will, if you allow yourself to engage in that donut thought for too long, it, it, reaches, a, it reaches a point where you, you cannot stop yourself from having that donut. Does that make sense? So apart from the general mindfulness throughout the day, if you're struggling with donuts, or whether it's donuts, alcohol, drugs, uh, gambling, whatever it is, you know, not only do your spiritual work, but you can't allow, your, you know, every moment you allow your ego to indulge in that thought for donuts, shall we say, let's call it donuts, but it could be something else for you. I'm not just talking about me, you know, can you, everyone has their personal donut to worry about, whatever it is. So don't give it airtime. Do your spiritual work, have a strong intention, and every time you have that donut thought, whatever your donut is, then you have to disengage. Do not give it critical time. And then at a certain point, you know, you'll stop having donuts and just keep up the spiritual work and you'll, you'll remain at that level of consciousness and donuts will stop. So I've said groups and I've said if you're stuck on an island, um, what you do. But the ego is very ferocious. If it's got a, you know, it's not, if your ego gets payoff, why? Okay, I'll, I'll end on this and then we we'll see if there's any other questions. But this was one of the great things and actually there was something nice, you know, I mean the Course does say everything in this world you chase is an illusion. <coughs> you know, uh, Hawking said, what is it, a hall of mirrors? You go around chasing these things, like when I, when I get this job I'm going to be so happy, or when I get that person, or when I'm thinner I'm going to be so happy, or whatever it is. And you get them and, you're, and then eventually you find out it's not that, after you've, you've just, you know, gone a hundred miles to, gone to any lengths to try and get the thing that you thought would, and then after a while, you know, go, well, actually that wasn't it, that, that wasn't the last place. And so, I just share this, and this came from one of my other spiritual teachers, but it was, I'll just end it, and it's one of my favourite things, so, for people who've seen my videos, you'll have heard it a few times. But, um, so, um, and this, I think, came from Ramana, like, when you want something in the world, when you want something, when something is, or of course in miracles, when you project specialness onto something, or it's magical, then as soon as you have something that's special and magical that you want to make you whole, then immediately you're in a state of spiritual unrest. You know, you don't, might not realize it. It's like, oh, I'm dreaming of having donuts after this group is over. But actually, that's not me being happy right now. You know, if you're honest with yourself, me sort of waiting, like I hope this group can finish early <laughs> so that I can run to the supermarket and get a bag of donuts, is actually I am in ego, I am in ego distress I'm, and I'm, I'm sort of like fantasizing about going to the supermarket and getting that bag of donuts and getting that high, you know, so, so I might say like are you happy now, are you present, I might say I'm happy and present but really I'm not. You know, because this thought of, I can't wait to get the donuts later on. I can't wait for all you guys to leave. So, <laughs> so, so it's like, that would, that would have been true. That would have been true one day. That would have been true one day, a long time ago, because I, I had a food addiction. So that is actually, you're in spirit, really, you're not happy. You're not present. You are in a state of spiritual unrest. And this was the thing he got, like, because I've been dreaming about the donuts and my ego saying can't wait to get that sugar high and that fuzzed out feeling. 
you know, and that's I'm fantasizing about the donuts. So as soon as, when I have those donuts, what I get is an absence of thought because I get the thing that my ego wanted and it stays silent. It stays silent. The ego plays dead because you've got the thing that you were looking for for so long. You couldn't wait to get that bag of donuts. So this is what really happens. Your ego shuts up for a short period of time and you get a high. That high is a spiritual high. You're actually getting a connection to God. Like your ego was going, I want donuts, I want donuts. Then you eat the donuts. So the ego got you to eat the donuts. And then you, get, you go into a, a level of bliss. There's different things that take you on to different levels of bliss. But you have, and then, so that's the absence of your ego because you're eating the donuts. And then, you go, and then the ego starts to talk after a period. After you get your high, it goes, see, donuts really work. So, so you, you didn't really feel good. And then you had the donuts and you did feel happy. So happiness comes from donuts. All you have to do is have donuts and you feel happy again. And that's how addiction happens. And then eventually, you know, people in 12 steps know, eventually you're at an end stage, you're eating donuts and you don't feel happy because the high gets less, but now you're, you're in bondage. Now you're in bondage. So when I heard that, I go, if I get happy because I'm going to the Bahamas, I'm happy, or I'm happy because this person said they like me, or I'm happy because I'm eating donuts, or I'm happy because whatever it is, if I have that, then I have this dualistic up and down with my ego. It, it's like, so I, I will, to the extent I allow these things, they become, the, nothing gives me happiness. There is nothing in the world that makes me happy. All that is, is that I've made it magical, and then, you know, like, oh, I'm dreaming of going to the Bahamas, I'll be so happy when I'm in the Bahamas. And then I'm in the Bahamas, and then my ego shuts up for a period of time. And then, it, and then the Bahamas is not enough, you know. And it says, well, you need to go to, I don't know, what, what, Seychelles or something? I don't know. I'm not good at those things. <laughs> so Seychelles is going to be better. And, you know, classically with relationships, they talk about, we know this, the honeymoon period, isn't it? You know, and one day I'll get married to the, uh, Mrs. Wright, and I feel so deprived for 10 years. And then I've met Mrs. Wright. And then it's like, we all know in the collective, oh, it's like bliss for six months, isn't it? You know, okay, she doesn't do the washing, she leaves her socks on the floor, but she's still beautiful. She's still beautiful, you know, I love her anyway. And then after six months, when the ego starts talking, yeah, those socks drive you mad, don't they? And, and, and then it's like, and then it's like, okay, this wasn't quite the right one, but it did work for six months. So it did work for six months. So the next one who doesn't drop their socks on the floor is going to work forever. So then you recover a relationship, so addict. So anyway, I think, I think that's... But that was... Well, sorry, sorry. I don't know where I come up with these things, but it's like... It's like... But it's the thing of like... Okay, one last thing, which is great. Like... Um, there is collective levels of what, how things release your ego from. Like generally, the collective, if you have a sugar high, you'll get a level of ego release in general. If you have a cocaine high, if you have an ecstasy, it will block up enough of your ego that you get a connection to God leveling at ecstasy. So different things numb, you, numb the ego to different levels, and different things are more addictive. But of course, if you're on a level of enlightenment, when you get full connection to God, then nothing is addictive. Because you're in the now. You know, no, no ego is the maximum, ha maximum happiness. So if you're an enlightened teacher, you're like, like this throughout the day. You're at a level of infinite presence and non-dual presence and light. If you're an addict, which is the worst thing to be, because that's the extreme bondage. Like let's say I was, when I was a donut addict, it would be like, I feel shit, eat donuts, feel high, feel shit eat donuts, feel high. So your life is like, if you're in bond, whatever your donut of choice is, your day goes like this if it's a strong addiction. You go up, down, up, down, up, down. So is it better, you know, and then you have thinking like, if only I could eat donuts non-stop throughout the day, I'd be happy. And that's, that doesn't work, you know, I'll let people know. So, because <laughs> it becomes like you need your drug supply just so that you can escape from life. And eventually that stops working. And it can be a donut, it can be alcohol, it can be drugs, it can be a person, whatever it is. So the way to be then happy, now who wants to be happy all the time? So if you want to be happy or to the level of happiness you want, 
You want your spiritual state, your presence, your connection to be where your happiness is from, not a thing out there. And that's not to be, I'm not against donuts and relationships and jobs and careers, but when you project that that thing is what's giving you happiness, as opposed to being present or in the infinite state and being with those things, it's totally different. You know, then to project that, I, that a donut is the thing that is the source of happiness. And I'm not, I'm not an anti-donut, anti-relationship, anti-working anti person.